welcome to what drives us episode 420 for wednesday july 14th 2021 my name is russell frost and if you're looking at the screen like i'm looking at the screen your brain is probably registering confusion these people look familiar they i've seen them before but where and when and who are they and why and so this is uh i'll own this this is a self-indulgent exercise on my part i wanted to be with i wanted to do a show with my friends that we started the show with and that's kind of the core group that you see here so the guy right below me and who knows if it'll end up that way but nonetheless uh yeah yeah uh danny cooper the guy Hello? who started the show <laughs> with me danny cooper it's been a long time everybody nice to be back on thank you for allowing me to be back on russell and tony <laughs> Uh, and by the way, the, the check cashed. I appreciate your donation to Excellent. be on the show tonight. Good to hear. Uh, Russell Frost Pack Fund. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. It's a pack donation. Sure. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And next to him, another What Drives Us co host uh, wearing the To Go Before shirt. Thank you, Tony, for that, by the way. That's always nice yeah, to see. Yeah. Here for you. Uh, uh, you you've seen him up until a few months ago when he silently kind of faded away to do other things and we missed him so he came back mr tony schaefer oh hey yes yeah, so um episode 420 so i took a picture of myself and um and a friend uh getting ready for episode 420 and um i i, I think i'm one of them very similar yeah the facial oh, hair gave it away yeah i, I want to see yeah. tony with facial hair nobody wants to see my facial hair. only one person looks good with blonde facial hair and that's santa claus <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just end up looking like the lead singer of nelson and that is not good with long blonde hair yeah no no I have nothing to say to that. So I'll just introduce our fourth and final member of tonight's show. One of, again, the original What Drives Us crew. Uh, he, uh, uh, it is Dr. Evan Fusco. Huh? What? <laughs> what? Can't hear ya. You want me to type this out so you can read it? I can't see. <laughs> I wouldn't help a damn bit. <laughs> Joining us via TTY <laughs> is uh, Dr. Evan Fusco. TTY. Wow. <laughs> nice. uh, man, it, it is fun to see you guys again. There, and, and absolutely a pleasure. So, and, and we have no agenda tonight. We have no news stories. Uh, we just wanted to talk. And I'm going to turn it over to Danny because Danny said he had something he wanted to say. Oh, well, it's kind of a general topic, I guess. Um, I kind of wanted, I'm interested in hearing y'all's uh, impression of future of the Prius. And because we have gotten like, there's not a lot of word at all coming out from Toyota about Prius, next gen Prius. The only thing I've heard about it is that it will be coming out uh in 2023 as a 2024 model um otherwise i've heard nothing so has holy toyota shit. given up on the prius holy shit that is absolutely right toyota typically does six-year models and i have the plug-in from 2017 and the six year would be 2003 2004 oh my god i have totally lost track of time well in the it would be an eight-year model changeover for the standard prius at that point because it came yeah, out yeah that's true yeah um so i i just in this world of uh seems like rapid electrification over the last two months <laughs> yeah. coming out of nowhere uh, what is your impression on Toyota's long-term commitment to the Prius? Can I, can I share some numbers? 20, can you? 2012. You numbers? 2012. Oh, no. Peak year for our Toyota Prius, all, all models, sales, 236, almost 237,000. Dropped to... Let's go to 2017, 108,000, almost 109. 
2020, 43,000. Okay, now could that be now the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Could that not be the whole truth? Because perhaps in 2012, let's see, 2012, when was the hybrid Camry introduced? In 2007. Yeah, that was 2007. Okay, but but even mm -hmm. then, that Toyota Camry was the standard Camry with half the trunk taken up by batteries. It was a retrofit. Because what, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is loyal Toyota owners may have bought the Prius early on because it was the only hybrid in the, in the market. And then as Toyota expanded their hybrid lineup, then the Prius went down and the other markets. I'm, I'm wondering if you looked at overall Toyota hybrid sales, would that number go up? You see what I'm saying? Yes, you and you on the East Coast with your hand up. <laughs> Guess what the number one Toyota hybrid seller was last, last month? RAV4. Uh, Russell, you pay attention to this stuff. You can't answer. Oh. Uh, Corolla. Avalon. No. Fosco, any idea? Uh, hi, I'd go Highlander. Venza. What? What? Toyota Venza. Right, Russell? What the I hell? I take your word for it. I, I don't even know what a Venza but is. I, I don't keep track of it. You were Rav the sales was guy. second, was and second. I think it's probably, people are pointing mostly to a production issue with the RAV. Yeah, yeah, uh, I would definitely guess that because I got to think the RAV smoked the Venza, but Venza's hybrid only. Yeah, so Venza hybrid only outsold every other Toyota hybrid there is. Okay, so uh, what is what is the Venza? Is Venza a minivan? What is the Venza? No, it's a, it's a step up wagon. from the. Uh, it's between the Highlander and the Rav. Yeah, the, okay. it's a station wagon that's about two inches higher than a station wagon. It's really okay. nice looking though. It's really good. It, it drives wonderfully. It's a nice car. I uh, reviewed it last year. It's it's a it's a nice car. Yeah. I could I could see that being a, a top selling car because you know we're people like their crossovers, yeah. It and and if it if it sits up higher, I could I could totally see that. So, um, well, what one of the obstacles I see for Prius is just the other, like we're like we're alluding to the other options in the market, not only within the Toyota family, but like you look at something like the Ford Maverick. Uh, which is a going to be a light duty truck that gets 40 miles to the gallon. And so unless the Prius starts to eclipse 60 miles to the gallon and bring something new to the, to the table, uh, I, I don't see, I, I see sales volume being a difficult issue for them going forward. Um, I felt, I felt like in the beginning with the fourth generation model that they stopped their uh, pushing the boundaries of technology that they're putting into uh, Toyota vehicles. Like Prius used to be the model that would get the technology right after Lexus, right? So like smart key mm -hmm. and Bluetooth. And they, we were very early on getting that, that technology. And that continued for the third generation a little bit. Um, and then for fourth gen, it, it felt like they were just kind of, not parts bin, but it was just a lot of stuff that you that was standard on other Toyotas at that point. Yeah. Oh, do you I know? Have... I just had a thought. Um, I have so you know, much fifth gen say. Prius, and you know, my I, I my my brain went to. There's going to be an all electric Prius. There's got to be. But then, but then the other half of my brain said. I don't own a gun and I'm not a violent person. The only thing that could change those two things is if Toyota introduced a hydrogen Prius. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the argument, of course, the Prius should be the first all electric, at least in the United States. Don't they have 
electric vehicles in Japan? Okay, they have one, two. I think one. they have that silly iDrive or something. Well, I want to say, yeah, but silly. they have hydrogen in Japan. That's what they care about. Yeah, more. yeah, of course. So, but um, how is there not an all electric vehicle in the Toyota lineup yet? Well, yeah. A month, five weeks ago, I was in Texas at Plano at Toyota HQ for what Toyota called their HQ Confidential event. It was far and away the biggest model debut uh, that they've ever had. Uh, you know, Danny has been to a few of these things. You guys have certainly put up with enough of that. You've seen enough of that crap. And it's usually one, maybe two, maybe a family of vehicles, but it's usually one or a couple of things that might be loosely related. I mean, this is like 20 new vehicles, like the whole wow. line, okay? Oh, wow. It was an intense four days. Um, and... I'm going to, just to give you an idea of what, uh, oh, wow, that's a little weird. It won't let me share a screen. Toyota's got control of your computer. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have. Oh, my God. You did uh, say it was confidential. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, it doesn't matter. That was just part of a joke. So, um, it, you know, we saw things like the new Tundra. Uh, the new Lexus NX, uh, the brand new Corolla Cross, which is the Corolla crossover vehicle that's coming out. Wait for it. Gas only. Gas only. Corolla Cross. I mean, in the name, it's like, we're going to sell a buttload of these kids. No, gas only. Uh... Gas only. And when I, uh, at, the, at the press conference for the Corolla Cross, when I stood up and uh, kind of sadly, like not my intention, but I think I embarrassed the presenter, like said, look, you guys came out last year with the Venza that's hybrid only. You were, you know, like you didn't invent in hybrid technology, but you mainstreamed it. You made it the word. Your vehicle brand is the same as hybrid. And you're coming out with this car in 2021 as a gas only car. And she kind of looked at the ground and sort of kicked at the turf and kind of shuffled the mic back between a couple of hands and said, what, did you see the video that we ran? And I'm like, yeah. She said, well, the little blue logo at the end, that's like a teaser. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm like, what are we waiting for? What do you why, mean it's coming? Why is it? Yeah, it's Whoa, coming. It, it, it's, you, hybrid technology. HSD is like been your baby for <laughs> a million years. Since 1997. And yep. it's going to take you some, some time to adapt the system to the Corolla Cross. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, yeah. hey. And uh, um, so... You know, of course, right? What's the next, the, not the next thing, but but a little while later, I'm at the debut for the new Prius, the new special edition Prius. Oh, that's going to be exciting, right? Special edition Prius. Danny's already heard this rant. I'm sorry, Danny. It's going to be the new special edition Prius. It's the Nightmare. It's the Nightwing. No, no, wait. It's the Nightshade. And what is this? What is what is what is it? It's black. Everything is black. That's that's what Toyota's. They put all their chips on the table and went all black Prius. Now that's the special wow. edition. Prius. They probably paid somebody a hell of a lot of money to come up with that idea. I I got nothing. So there is nothing to have. I mean, you know, the, so anyway, at this event, the, the electrification presentation was another one. I sprained both eyes, rolling them so hard because the, the talk around electrification is so much double talk. It's so much. So when it comes to Toyota and electrification and, and, and hybrids and what they're doing, I have no clue, but they're not talking about it and they're not doing it. And they're... I mean, come on, Ford comes out with an F-150 Lightning at $39,000. It's one of the most exciting vehicles that has come out since I've been doing what drives us since 2010. That's amazing. I get Ford, Ford. I get it.
excited when I see the F-150 Lightning commercials. I would run out and buy one of those bastards. Yeah, I would. I am not a truck driving man, but I would buy that truck. Yep. <laughs> no audio, Danny. Are you muted? I should unmute myself is what there you're you saying. <laughs> Toyota seemed to uh, put all their eggs in two different baskets. One is this hydrogen basket, which might work better in Japan than it does here. I, I don't, uh, I have trouble. I can't condemn or uh, applaud that move yet. But the other basket is uh, the solid state battery technology. And I swear to God, it feels like we've been waiting on Toyota to come out with this announcement about their solid state battery technology for years. And maybe that's why we're getting the Prius pushed is because maybe the Prius EV is going to have the solid state battery technology in it. And it just keeps getting delayed a little bit. Um, I mean, am I wrong here? It seems like that there's the two places that they've put yeah. all their effort into. Yep. Yeah. If, if you're hanging your hat on a technology you don't have yet, that's not a good place to be. Well, I will say this. I mean, I've got a friend who's a, he's a Dodge Ram, or not Dodge Ram, I'm sorry, that he would yell at me for that. He's a Ram truck, uh, truck owner. And he's very interested in, in electrifying but wants to stay in a truck is very interested in the lightning because of that and then he looked up the um you know charging network and i told him about my long long-term experiences with charging on a network on a third-party network like that when i had my bmw i3 um and it's just not the same experience that you get with a with a tesla uh, charging experience. And I think that's one place that I will definitely applaud Tesla for. Um, but a buyer like him, for example, very interested in the electrification aspect of it, but the range of it is still an issue for him. Cause if he's going to spend like a lightning that you're going to find on the lot, let's be honest, Russell, you're not going to find a $40,000 lightning on the lot. Yeah. It was are the ones that are going to be sold to fleets you're going to find a seventy thousand dollar lightning on the lot yeah and if you're going to spend seventy thousand dollars on a, on a truck you want it to be your family vehicle you want to be able to load up the family and go on a road trip in it and for any of us who have depended on third-party charging networks to make any sort of long-term trip in a ev it is a horrendous experience and so to me I get the idea that with the leaf, you only need a hundred miles of range to do what you want to do. It's a city car. But if you start committing these vehicles to being long range vehicles and creating them in a way that are going to be used as long range vehicles for family trips and for, you know, things like that, you're going to need a 400 plus range, just like a gas car. And you're going to have to replicate that experience. And so I do, like, I hate Toyota sitting on the sidelines like this, but I do see their, what I hope is their strategy of once they release something, it's going to be, it's going to fill all these needs. Well, I think what, what I think your, your, your friend needs to get the F-150 Lightning and then the other car needs to be a Corolla Cross for the long tracks. See? Everything's taken care of. He was talking I'm about I could help. for his new yeah. little neighborhood area down in Charleston. And I was like, mm -hmm. just buy a Nissan Leaf. It'll be cheaper than a golf cart. <laughs> True. Evan, the only one here with an electric car is Evan Fusco. Evan. Well, I mean, I've long expressed my, my frustration and disappointment in Toyota for not pursuing electric stuff and, and their approach to it. It's, it's frustrating. It's confusing. It's, 
it's it's really inexplicable um, the the rationale they've continued to use doesn't make any sense uh, so I don't know yeah I, and and like you said waiting on solid state to come into prime time is crazy I mean I, an approach more like they did with using lithium in in the Prius probably is a more logical approach. Start out with models that utilize existing technology that's proven in an automobile application. And then when you have your solid state battery, you sell it as an upgraded option, right? And you right. have your, what, you know, Prius EV plus or whatever the hell you want to call it that, that has their fancy dancy new solid state battery. And eventually you transition that into the main battery for all your vehicle lines. Um, but, you know, sitting around waiting and, you know, you, you just wait, hold your breath. We'll have it. It'll be the best. Okay. Yeah. In the meantime, everybody's sleeping you in the dust. Yeah. Even for now, <laughs> now, you know, I, 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 in 2017, when I bought my prime, I had several people who were confused, I guess, because, you know, I pushing electrification, pushing, you know, a fan of electric vehicles. Why did I buy another plug in hybrid and not go full electric? And, you know, like Danny had said, you know, you can see Toyota strategy potentially. I just may be the ideal Prius Prime owner. So I can fully charge my vehicle and get about 29, about 30 miles to a charge right now. I work 14 miles away. So on a really good day, I can drive there and back on one charge. But I don't have to worry about that because I can charge for free at work. So I'm topping off at work. I'm topping off at home. My regular commute and then a few errands around town, 100% EV. Over the 4th of July week, I drove home 402 miles. I did that on the interstate, maintaining interstate speeds the entire time, did not have to stop and recharge, refuel, or anything. Half a tank later, I was at my destination, fully uninterrupted. I was able to plug in there, drive around full EV, topped off the tank. I drove back 402 miles, seven and a half hours, fully uninterrupted, didn't have to stop for anything. And now I'm driving back and forth to work, fully EV. That I think is Toyota strategy. Well, it's partially Ford strategy now too, right? They've got the plug-in. Uh, they have a they have a plug-in F one fifty, right? Or is it just a hybrid? I, I just step into know. something. I forgot. I don't know. I I, I want to say I remember hearing years ago about a like a plug-in hybrid, but I don't know if they were just toying around with that. I guess I, I don't understand why that's not Whoa. a larger strategy. Is anybody else screen freaking out? No. No, just you. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Evan. Wow. Yeah, my screen is freaking out. I don't know what happened. I, no. So, since you didn't ask, let me offer my theory. I think Toyota's into making money. <laughs> what? No, I, 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 I don't, I don't think uh, they it's, they are purely altruistic, Russell. I, and, I know, and look, I know. I am offended I and that you I would know. suggest such a crass. I, 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 now we're going to hear behind Fusco their efforts. Tesla's actually making money. <laughs> I, I just, I think Toyota's into making money. I think Toyota's into making, selling cars. And I think that they got a taste of leadership with the Prius. I don't know why they walked away from it. I, they spent a ton of money and a ton of effort building a brand and building something that was hugely successful. And then eh, about halfway through, they just kind of turned their backs on it and went, okay, we're done. Now we're going to do, go do something else. There are, yeah, there are times where I, I take the whole Toyotas out to make money. And then I get really confused. Like, providing 5,000 RAV4 primes to North America when you know you could sell 50,000 in a week. 
that part doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They're not making enough money on them. There's not, enough, there's not enough margin in it. I say knowing nothing about what the actual margin mm-hmm. is. I'm just... yeah. Uh, Why I, wouldn't there be? I mean, you think they haven't gotten their hybrid synergy drive production costs down to a manageable level? I, I don't... I don't know, Evan, is, is the only honest answer I can give you. I'm just kind of coming off the top of my head. It, it, believe me, if you is, is, am I the only one here that's driven that vehicle? Probably. I think so. Yeah. I think so. If you had a chance to drive the RAV4 Prime, it would blow your mind. It is an amazing vehicle. Okay. Sing this, and, and I, I, I hate to keep pumping this, but it is the second fastest Toyota they make. Wow. The only the Supra is faster. And that car That's is crazy. awesome. It hauls ass. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's the larger RAV4, which I'm not, I actually kind of like the smaller, the older RAV4 that's smaller, but everybody's getting bigger. The Corolla is what the size yeah. of like a yeah. Lincoln Mark seven now, for God's sake. So, you know, I mean, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with Tony. They, I would think they could sell a buttload of RAV4 they primes. They chose not to. Okay. Make but you know the, the new Mariah is out. Oh boy! Which I drove in Texas, by the way, and which is still a blast to drive and makes no goddamn sense at all. None. <laughs> None. Zero. It runs on cow poop and outputs water. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, if it ran on cow poop, it would make sense in Texas. But there's, <laughs> they don't even have a filling station in Texas for it. Okay. Uh-huh. Like. It's it's just they haven't installed one on campus. No. Well, how did they fuel it? I have no clue. They have a truck. Well, it's not, but needless it's to not say, it's hard. That, Hydrogen's but, everywhere. You just yeah, you, you know, know yeah. you just drive down to Boca like Chica net. and use the SpaceX uh, hydrogen right. uh, oh, right. there. Elon gives away hydrogen in buckets for free. <laughs> yeah. True story. Well, let's stop shitting on Toyota for a moment. Let's let's talk about all these other companies that have announced. Uh, EVs over the last couple of months. How much money is Ford going to lose per Lightning sold? What's your guesstimate? Why does that matter? Well, I, I think how I, we I just think there's this ridiculous argument to be made, especially from Tesla fans, that that Tesla EVs are profitable right now. They are not. Tesla is still propped up by their carb credit mm-hmm. uh, sales. Quarter <clears throat> of- Bitcoin. <clears throat> Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, I think Ford's going to, uh, Ford has to be, <clears throat> I think Ford probably sees as they have to lose their asses on selling some cars to give this a shot or face some sort of, irrelevancy over a extended period of time because yeah, i think it's 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 a lost lead really sucked. sorry tony what oh no 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 i was interrupting you um but but i'm agreeing with you i i think it's a lost lead i think ford's coming out with this truck and god damn it how many people have asked me over the last 10 or 15 years, when is there going to be an electric truck? People have just said, if they had an electric truck, I'd consider an electric vehicle, but I don't want a sedan. I want a truck. God damn it, bring me a truck. Ford is bringing a truck that actually looks like a truck and not a five-year-old mashing a bunch of geometric shapes together. It looks like a truck. It's a Ford truck and it you could take it to a Ford dealership and they'll actually possibly repair it for you. The Ford Lightning is the biggest thing <laughs> to come to EVs. It's going to have the biggest splash. And they're losing money because they see the greenwashing writing on the wall. And they're willing to do it because they're bringing it to market. And it's green credits. They don't have to purchase now. It's built into the car. So they're losing money and saving money at the same time. And it's marketing. 
That's my take. It's a lost lead. We've known this for years. The initial EV introduction is a losing, you know, it's, it's a losing battle. You make money later. So I think you're right. Um, at the same time, I think you have to acknowledge that they recognize that if they don't get their money in the pot now, that they're going to be in big trouble down the road. And, and you know, EVs aren't going to go away. Um, they are going to become profitable. They are going to become the vehicle of the future. When that is, if it's really going to be 20 years from now, a lot of people are skeptical. I'm skeptical. But, you know, um, it's where it's going. And, and I think you have to um, start working on that technology, working with that technology, working with the infrastructure, figuring out what works and what doesn't. A la the, you know, first generation Prius, you know, at some point you got to go, let's throw something out there and see what sticks and then we'll make it better and we'll figure out how to make it a good vehicle. Um, so I think there is a lot of that to this as well. And, and, and yeah, there's some, some glamour that comes along with that being the first to market with a truck that looks like a truck that's an EV. And then when it kicks yeah. all the other EVs trucks ass or all the other non-EV trucks ass on the road, you know, then, then you get some hype around it. I, like Tony said before, it is the most uh, impressive EV that I've seen so far, as far as uh, its potential impact on the market. And uh I can't wait to see if it's if sales are artificially limited by Ford on, you know, like, you know, we're willing to sell these, but we're losing money if we, on each one. We're not going to sell that many or if they're going to just open the floodgates and and sell what they can. I mean, I don't know what the story is with the Mach-E right now. I know the availability of that is pretty low. Um but so I don't I don't know if they were expecting to sell a lot of the Mach-E's, but they've got to be expecting to sell a shit ton of these F one fifty Lightnings. Yeah, I would think so. I, I've I've only heard heard two types of reviews about the Mach E. Uh, one is good, and the other is amazing. So yeah, I've not seen a negative review of a Mach E yet. Yeah. I'm seeing them here. I haven't driven one yet, but I'm seeing them all over the roads. So people are buying them. People are getting them. Recently, too. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've only seen one in the wild. Oh. The Volkswagen ID4. Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen ID4. Oh, really? Not as, not as many as Mach E, but I've seen a, a couple of ID4s mm -hmm. here. But like I'm in, you know, EV land, so yeah, it's definitely a weird market for that. Um, I I want to add something to what Danny said about the the Lightning, in that I think. I think number one, Ford's planning on whatever, making money, losing money. They're, they're going to do whatever they're going to do with this. But I think they're also looking at the competition. I think they're looking at the time. And I also think they're looking at an incoming political administration that maybe is going to work out some new credits for these vehicles that the previous administration would never have considered doing. Now, of course, there's Congress and lots of other hurdles to that. But um I think that's what's going on with that is that Ford's just saying, you know what, the time's right. We got to let, let's go now rather than wait and be fourth place behind the Silverado electric and the Ram electric and, you know, whatever else is, you know, the cyber truck, God forbid. Yeah. That's never going to, yeah. just for the record, cyber truck doesn't exist. It does. There's one with a dented glass uh, driver window somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Two, that's right. Two, Two yeah. broken. Yeah. Two, <laughs> Two broken windows. Okay, so mentioned earlier um, on a, on a I, I don't even know the scale, um, the ID4. What, what do you think, Volkswagen, future? Would you buy an ID4 over? any other vehicle. And that's my problem with buying the Mach-E. <laughs> <Is it buying laughs> and 
I don't have the best track record with Fords, so. But it's like when you when you eliminate so many of the problems that that uh, Volkswagen has had over the years with uh, transmissions and <laughs> you know just any moving mechanical part of a Volkswagen <laughs> cheat devices. <laughs> Yeah, and diesel. Um, and you don't have to worry about the emissions control system. So. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll say, I mean, when, when I see an ID4 advertisement on television and, you know, or when I see the car, I think that that's not bad. And then I'm like, oh, that's right. This is like VW's first EV. Probably not a winning bet. So I, I haven't driven the ID4 yet. Uh, I have talked to people that have driven the ID4. One of them yesterday, uh, our friend John Volker, uh, who spoke glowingly of, of it. Um, so is interested in that and several other electric vehicles. Uh, um, I, I don't... I think the first thing... Uh, it's, it's pretty well recognized that the number one factor in a car decision is brand loyalty. Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. I think so. People are very, very brand loyal. And there are people that have driven Volkswagens for generations and Fords for generations and Chevys and all on down the line. Okay. My great granddad drove an Oldsmobile and damn it, I'm going to drive a GM car no matter what. Um, so, a lot of a lot of people that potentially might be interested in some of these cars aren't necessarily interested in a Tesla or a Toyota or a Lucid or a Fisker. They want a Ford or a Chevy or a Volkswagen because that's the the, the thing that they trust. That's what they gather to their bosom and and hug very very lovingly. Um, anything else would be them taking a big risk. I think that's the thing we forget. Like some people are, yeah, they're going to buy it. It's electric. And it has, how many times has this group, all the four of us said, God, we wish Toyota would make an electric car because we love Toyota and we want to buy an electric car from them. Yep. Even though there are other electric cars out there. Now Danny's had, Evan went to Tesla. Danny's had the i3. Tony has a, you know, a, a, a plug-in, which is sort of like an EV. I mean, and I'm driving a, 13 year old Prius. But so, yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it. I think, I think there's a certain amount of success these companies are going to see no matter what. Uh, th their halo is going to be a little shinier. So, yeah, maybe Ford's going to lose a little money. I don't know. You know, I, I don't. <sighs> is this the sort of question that we don't know the answer to until we've got, I don't know, five or six years under the belt of these batteries to see what our failure rate is looking like? And I think the other, there's like audited financial results, right? I mean, you know, until you see some, some 10 Ks and some quarterly reports, how do you know, you know, we're, we're just guessing. Um, and the one company, the one American company that's making EVs is got to be the least trustworthy when it comes to financials. <laughs> so we can't even use them as a touchstone. Yeah. And on that loyalty, you remember, I've still got three uh toyota's hybrids right? in my household right now i've got five vehicles and three out of the five are toyota hybrids and who drives the toyota hybrids my kids your kids the kids the people that you want to protect the most right you're not giving them yep. your kids and they so, love them sure oh, man i love you know what i the beautiful thing about my beat up hundred and thirty five thousand mile 13 year old prius is and Kimberly and I have discovered the joy of not giving a shit about anything. We don't care where we park it. If somebody opens the thing and puts another ding in the door, fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It runs mm -hmm. like a clock. That's all we care about. Yep. It gets 50 miles of the gallon. That's all we care about. It's very freeing psychologically not to be like, oh my God, what if the person in that Silverado bangs my car? I don't care. I just don't care. It's so nice. I wish I had a cool new Lexus, but I'm fine with what I have. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, a new car and a bunch of stress. There's that. <laughs> yeah. A lot less money. Yeah, a lot less money, yeah. But think of the mileage you'd get with a lighter wallet. See, there's always an advent. You know, there's always half side. I'd love a, a Lexus UXH. I love that car. It's a great little car. So it's oh, a little CHR. I saw. Yeah, that's the, the hybrid Lexus yeah. CHR. <laughs> yeah. Tony hated I it. A, I loved it. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I was not a fan of that car. See? But I saw a 250H. Was it a 250H? It was like a new 250H in a parking garage last weekend. And that was a slick looking car. It's sort of a small squat crossover, very angular, you know, very new age Lexus. I was, yeah, I was tempted to look up to see, you know, mileage and, and cost and whatever. I got, the, I got good mileage, not Tony Schaefer mileage, but um, I did really well with that car and I drove the living hell out of it. I'm sure you did. Yeah. That's as I am wont to do. Yeah. I'm sorry, Danny, what, what was your original point? Was it just? <laughs> I don't even know at this point. I don't even know either. I, I think I was just, what I'm interested in is, is Toyota has proven the, that their hybrid battery technology is, is pretty bulletproof. Yes. But there is an expiration date on them. Uh, the early Nissan Leafs proved that there can be significant battery, battery degradation issues. Um, and so I'm just really interested to see now that we have these new entrants, uh, manufacturer wise into the market on seeing who ends up having battery issues and who doesn't and other components too. I mean, there's, you know, you got motor, uh, issues, which if I were to put it on one company, I would say that Volkswagen is going to have issues before anybody else. <laughs> Are you picking on Volkswagen? I, I'm more than happy to pick on Volkswagen. Not yes. going to get a lot of argument here, I don't think. <laughs> so I grew up riding in a diesel Volkswagen oh, Rabbit. Jesus, someone hated you. Seventy nine. Mm. My dad's. Maybe it was eighty. Oh. Anyway, it was a. Those were horrible cars. cars. Yeah. Okay, so here's a random thought. Here's something that, that just popped into my head. And I've kind of been thinking about this for a while. What if we get one of these international, could be Chinese, could be Indian, could be Tata owned, could be BYD. What if someone from somewhere else pops into the North American market and just takes the market by storm with an entry level EV. Reno Twizy. What? Why? The, the Reno Twizy. It it's like Reno. 12 grand. Oh. It's a little tiny Euro sedan, a little two year sedan. Won't but pass our safety. Well, isn't that the same reason that the, the Prius isn't doing well? I mean, it just doesn't fit with the uh, the body style of car that Americans are looking for right now. That's why everybody, what I've been reading recently about Model Y versus Model 3 is people are saying the Model Y is going to eclipse the Model 3 and Model 3 is going to dwindle sales to minimal because of the CUV body yeah. style of the Y. As somebody who sees multiple Teslas every day, whose work location is about three quarters of a mile from the Tesla distribution center. So I get to see extra Teslas. I, the Model Y is ugly. Can I? People I know love I'll it. get blamed for that. Russell, they love it. I like, know. I'm just like, like left and right. I'm seeing the same thing that Danny's talking about. They go, they 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 think they want a three, and then they ride in a Y, and they like they want it. That car is ass ugly. I, is it a true hatchback or is it a trunk? I think it's a hatchback. It's sort of, but yeah, See, it's I mean, like a pregnant three hatchback. Well, and that's what would sell it for me over the three, right? Well, and and the threes. Uh, I mean, I can't get it at ice chest in the trunk of my three. I have to put it in the the. Back in through the back seat with the seat folded down. 
But if I remember correctly, you can put ice and shrimp in the front of the Mach-E. Yeah. Ford wins. That's that's an obscure ad reference. Nice. Right that was good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. That was good. That was good. And I you can fit like three times the amount of shrimp and ice in the Lightning. I'll tee yeah. one up for, for Dr. Fusco. Dr. Fusco, do you think it's an, a problem that Tesla's models are aging out? That they're aging out? How do you mean aging out? I mean, the 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 Model S is essentially what? Like eight years old? Yeah. The Model 3 is five years old, four years old, and is essentially the same vehicle that it is. I mean, and that's why we're yeah. getting like the Model S Plaid. Yay. Yeah. It's a Model mm -hmm. S, except it's fast. Durr. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, other than the face slip, minor facelifts, you're right. They haven't done a whole lot to them. Yeah. It probably is a little bit of a problem. I think people do like to, I mean, Americans are fickle and they like to see new and bigger and better and fancier and have a good reason to justify buying something new and different. Um, yeah. You know, the, so Tesla is definitely not iterating their current models a lot. And, and instead is kind of focusing on producing sort of new ones. Um, that takes a long ass time. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you what I see as the issue of Tesla's getting old. And uh, that is Russell is driving a 14 year old Prius. Is that what you 13. said? 13 year old Prius, 130,000 X miles. If anything goes wrong with that car, you know that Toyota produced enough parts that you can acquire a part, fix that car. Yeah, easily. Yes, and we know that early in the days, ten years ago, every part, many every part Tesla manufactured went into cars, and they were making model changes on the fly. Sometimes three or four times a year, something would change in the same model of car. Now those cars are hitting the second secondary market. If anything goes wrong with a 10 or 12 year old Model S, are they going to be able to find parts to fix it? Because Tesla wasn't manufacturing those parts. Tesla was putting every single part into a car to get it out on the road. That's what I see as the problem of aging Teslas. There's no parts out there to repair them. Maybe. Um, first, there's so few, so many fewer parts, and the parts that there are are relatively interchangeable. So, your motor dies in your 2012, you know, they can put a 2014 motor in it, it's not that different. Um, yeah, so even my, like my, you're right, like my wife's the, the onboard charger on her Model X uh, failed and got replaced with a a different model than she had but it was like a newer generation so it, it, it it's plug and play and that's one of the advantages of the fact that they aren't constantly changing is that pretty much everything that fit on 2012 still fits on 2020 um on those same models no, but, I, I hope so yeah but, i mean i but, hope but, I'm, but, I'm absolutely wrong no but you're right i mean no i, I don't think you're totally wrong i, th I think it's probably not going to be as big of a problem as it would be for a conventional automobile that has 20,000 pieces of parts in it, they can all fail. Um, generally, you know, you're taking out a, one whole big piece and putting a new whole big piece in rather than a whole bunch of little pieces that need to be individually replaced in a conventional vehicle. But there, there certainly could be issues with that going forward and, and it could be expensive or, or really difficult to repair. Uh, fortunately, we're, we do see a few uh, third party, you know, uh, non manufacturer repair folks out there that are poaching parts off of old vehicles and, and using those. Um, uh, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm not saying it's not going to happen at all. What are they I, taking out of the vault? The vault? Well, yeah, is that what you said? No, no, no. They're taking out old vehicles. I don't, oh, old vehicles. Sorry. Okay. Did you see the um, the um, the piece on Rich Rich Rebuilds? Rich Benoit. I forgot how. Yeah, Rich Benoit. Uh -huh. Rich Benoit. Did you guys see that? Um, it was a Tesla owner had an issue. I think it was a pump or something. He took a Tesla. They said, Oh, it'll be about $16,000 to fix that. 
somehow rich got involved he looked at it and he said oh i know what that part is he went out and i I want to say the article I read made it sound like he just went to a big box store, bought a $700 part or something, fixed the car for $700 after Tesla had Jeez. quoted $16,000. Is the big issue also still with Tesla's on the uh, uh, wreck repairs, body panels and whatnot? Far as you know, I haven't seen as much chatter about long delays for repairs, but I, I that may just be that people quit bitching about it. I don't know because it, it, it was there were some really ridiculous uh, long timelines for getting parts, and I, I know there's still a little bit of shortage. Like I had a, I don't even know, feel like a lower body skirt um, break. I don't know if I hit a curve where it just wore out or what, but um, and my uh, service guy was able to get his hands on one, but he said, there's probably, you know, I checked the inventory, there's 25, 25 of them, but there's probably requests from 75 different repair people for them. So it, it, it certainly implied that there's still some, uh, some sort of shortage on, on a lot of these body panel parts and things. I, I do want to acknowledge one thing when talking about Tesla not iterating and, and that their body cells are getting old. I get that they iterate with OTA I get that it's software updates and that stuff's constantly coming in and that the cars, it's not like buying a 13 year old Toyota that is what it is and never changes. I, I get that. But from a new car buyer perspective, if your 2021 looks exactly like your 2016, it's a little bit more difficult to sell it because it looks like it's five years old. Yeah, Definitely. but you know, I have to say, I mean, maybe other than what you guys were saying about the Model Y, and I don't think it's as offensive as you guys were making it out to be. The Y? I, yeah, I just, I think, you know, I actually like the slick, smooth look of the Tesla. I think it's relatively timeless. I don't mind the fact that a 21 looks like a 16. It doesn't bother me at all. Of course, I don't own one, but that's what yeah, I was going to say. I'm, I think you're only I'm now starting to see age of the Model S yeah. come into play. And I think that has more to do with the fact that you were seeing them so often for mm -hmm. so long. But I agree with Tony, the, the, the timeless um, silhouette of the Tesla, they definitely have that working for them to their advantage. I still don't, I don't think they can go like. Does, does anybody well, ever talk about the timeless silhouette of the 2017 Corolla? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, I'm, I don't mean to refute everything you say with one smart ass remark, but again, no. I live in a world that is like, these things are like flies around me. Okay. Tesla's <laughs> I, I, it's, it's just, it's just boring. What? Oh, I do find the Model 3 to be very boring. The, the, I, really? Do I find the Model 3 boring? Really? Yeah. No, I do. Is what it's I, it's really? electric wow. car. The Model Y is more yeah. in interesting to me than the, <sighs> than the wow. 3. The no, Model Y man. is like, how guess... can we make an, a Model 3 uglier? Oh, here's how. <laughs> At least wow. the Model 3 is king. You know, but oh, the Model Y is ugly. Oh, God. Uh, I, well, I, I don't. Other. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with and, you guys. On, on, that's fine. Uh, uh, I like their styling. I think the Model Three is the the best time of any of them. It, it, it's small. It just feels and looks sportier than anything else. Uh, I like it. Are, yeah, and I do crabby. feel that it's timeless. I like that it's smooth. It doesn't have a lot of extraneous you, angles. You don't think the S is better looking than the three? No, I don't. Really? No, I no. Like, I, 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 so I, like I, them both. I think I, like I think both. the the S is like more luxurious feeling overall. But as far as like something that feels sporty and clean and tight. Ah, I love that three. I love it. Yeah. I mean, in a way we're arguing chocolate versus vanilla here. <laughs> and again, it's totally well, subjective. No, actually, actually, I think we're arguing milk chocolate versus dark chocolate is what we're arguing. <laughs> whatever, red wine, white wine, yeah. I don't care. Go whatever I mean, you want. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, you know, like we, we are, we're approaching ten years on the the Model S, right? I mean, yeah. it's 
we're, we're getting close and, and it has not changed a whole lot. I mean, if you haven't been paying attention, you're not immediately going to pick up that there's a pre facelift and post facelift uh, version going on out there. I mean, it's uh, that they, they still look the same and, mm -hmm. and it, it probably is time for somebody to go, yeah, let's change the styling a little bit. So people think we're still making new cars. But you, yeah, still but it, sell it, that car? Was that? Do they still need to sell that car? <sighs> Probably. I mean, it's still sort of their. It's the the Prius of the the Teslas. You know, I mean, it's where they iterate the. the, the I mean, where everything's gone as far as um, increasing range first and increasing speed and power. You know, the Plaid version going. I, I don't know. Probably. And, but it's expensive. I mean, I don't know. It's a good question. They need to keep making the X. I mean, God, they, that's when they need to fucking fix and get rid of those damn falcon wing doors. I mean, no doubt. Well, that production is pretty much gone to nil, right? Yeah. Has it? Uh, Why is killed sure. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably good. That's Rav4 Hybrid versus Prius V. You know. Yeah. <sighs> Man, that's painful. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say even even if Tesla changed any model you know shape or anything it is not going to be rav4 dramatic i mean god rav4 went from the cute little thing to that abomination with the pointy hood whatever like they're jousting you know what i'm talking about that the thing with the emblem that's like 15 yeah. foot in front of the windshield and then the recent iteration is now flat and pug nosed Got a lot of shoulder to it. Is what yeah, and it's like you, you look at those and you can't even tell they're the same car. If not yeah. for the badging, you would think they were completely different models. The most recent so, one is the damn attractive, though. Like the Rav4 yeah, Prime yeah. is the car but, I love, lust after yeah. the most. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah, but I, I'm just saying, you know, Tesla doesn't need to change much, and I don't think they would. Whereas these other manufacturers are just doing whole scale, dramatic, everything changes. Yeah. You need to drive a RAV4 Prime, Danny Cooper. Oh, I know. I need to own a RAV4 Prime. Well, and there's a guy about an hour and a half away who emailed me who got one and offered to let me come out and drive it. I need to because I don't, I don't know if you guys saw my tweet or not. You uh, tweet? I yeah. tweet. Um, he does actually, but production like they're not taking any more orders for the prime. Oh, they're this. not, they're not. No, nope. I didn't know that. They are so overloaded with orders that they are shutting down, they're not accepting any more orders. And it might be for this entire generation, so it, it might be like, uh, well, because there's going to be a new RAV in two, three years, probably something like that. Um, so we may have to wait until then to be able to get through this backlog of prime orders. Uh, that is the responsible way to address high demand, shut down, taking orders. Hey, everybody wants this. Quick, stop taking orders. What the hell? They were building that one in Canada, right? And so I think they still have to ship all the battery modules from Japan, which I think because of COVID, it really killed their ability to produce. All right, Cooper, you big fat liar. I don't see a tweet from you since 2016. No, from Prius Chat. Oh, Prius Chat. Sorry. Yeah. Danny Cooper? No. Who's the, Danny Cooper? The Danny Cooper. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> the. Yes. Oh, uh, State University. But yeah, I lust after that car. That thing is... <laughs> it's the total package. I mean, man, just fast as hell. Great cargo capabilities yeah i was trying to get my wife in a brat for prime and yeah. um back when they were still taking orders i just couldn't couldn't do it I, it's it's limited availability that obviously yeah. but hey, you know what you could get a new mirai so about that ford lightning <laughs> <laughs> did you guys hear about that <laughs> Did I tell you I drove a Mariah in Texas? The new one. 
Yeah. And how was it? And everyone fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that, that's like a hypnotized thing. I drove a Mirai. Well, here's the thing no is one, that our, no our mind cares. goes to the first gen Mirai, which yeah. was a bit of a snoozer. That second gen, gen one looks amazing. Uh, I mean, I've only seen that full size model that we saw in Greensboro, but how how did they execute it? Like uh, powertrain, is it feel like any other EV? So, are we going to disagree? Do you, do you, are you saying that the first generation where I didn't drive well? No, I actually, I I mean, I liked it. It's just it was uh, very polarizing, and I think that this generation. Are we talking about styling now or powertrain? Styling. That's styling. Pretty much all I ever no, about. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to be clear because I thought the first generation where I drove really well. It did, and, and I yeah. loved, and I liked the interior. I, I thought it was a beautiful, luxurious car for sixty thousand dollars. Other than the dumb fuel source, it was a really nice car. Uh, same thing with this car. No change at all. It looks better on the outside. Still drives great. It drives like a big, fat, luxurious SUV. It's nice to ride in, um, but it uses, you've got to own a unicorn farm or you can't drive the damn thing. So what's the point? Look great on a shelf. Yeah. I mean, if I was a car collector, I'd love to have that car. I, but even then, God, what a joke. Yeah. No, no. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's. I'm I'm working on editing a review because they made they made me. I drove it because they asked nicely, and, uh, and it's a fun no car. For it, I'm sorry. And there was no one else in line for it. And there was no one else in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah, oh, it was me driving, or it was going to sit out in front of headquarters for another two days and yeah. not move. <laughs> I, I was going to say that's. That's the ride you go to at the carnival simply because everyone's <laughs> in one line and you don't feel like standing in line. Yeah. Damn. And when you bring it back, the guy that runs the ride is like, um, you want to go again? <laughs> <laughs> don't even have to get out, man. You can just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know- episode 840. I wonder what we'll be talking about as far as hydrogen goes. It, when? Episode 840. Oh, whatever it is. We'll, we'll be talking about how dumb it was that we wasted billions of dollars on hydrogen for consumer vehicles mm. when it only makes sense for commercial vehicles. That's what we'll be talking about. And I'm, that's another Patrick Connor 10 year long bet that he'll claim I lost that I won, but nonetheless. I do find uh, the application on yeah. the uh, like the cargo uh, docks very interesting. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, I, I it's hydrogen is a fuel is still dumb because it takes more energy to make than it saves, but getting fossil fuel burners off the road, it's a it's a step in the right direction, ish. Ish. Assuming that is green hydrogen, yes. Yeah. And hydrogen's not a fuel, it's a fuel carrier. What is it? It's not an energy source, it's an energy carrier. Uh, okay. Also gasoline, but well, but, but you can burn gasoline to generate energy. You have to consume energy to strip the hydrogen. And then you pass the hydrogen through a molecule to create the energy. It's a carrier. It's not right. a source. Well, okay. And that's, but that's why it's, that's why it's inefficient. That's why I'm splitting hairs here. That's why it's, it's such an inefficient method is because it takes as much or more energy to separate the hydrogen molecule. than you actually get out of consuming it in the car. Let's uh, let's work towards wrapping the show up. Evan, is there anything you'd like to bring up? Hmm. No, not in that public part of it. 
<laughs> Watch for the members only version of this video. <laughs> <laughs> Click subscribe and give us money and maybe we'll show you. I don't now, know. Okay. You know, it's, I'll, I'll just say this, you know, I, I, um, it, it would, to the audience that, that might be listening, um, you know, I, I miss this show. Uh, you know, I mean, I miss uh, being part of it in, in a lot of ways. Uh, it's been good for me to be away from it, but it, this is fun. I mean, interacting with you guys and talking cars and calling out Russell's bullshit. It's, you know, it's oh, that stuff. hurts. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's something. I mean, you call me, you know, calling me on my bullshit. <laughs> Somebody's got to. Schaefer, what about you? I, I, I'm doing, you know what? I'm doing a shout out to you three. This is a show like the shows we did for the first, what, 200 episodes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, sometimes we even, well, I mean, and, and so people who've recently subscribed and started watching the show might not know the first I, I don't even know that you could ever find the first 100 <laughs> episodes or whatever problem i mean because it was audio only to begin with yeah and it and, and sometimes there was news to talk about and sometimes there was just no news i mean literally sometimes there was nothing to talk about so it was this it was us sitting around with microphones and just kind of free willing you know, whatever, and just bouncing from topic to topic, it, you know, having that discussion. And it really was what we did here this evening, which was kind of the, you can imagine four guys sitting around a campfire, drinking a beer and just talking shit. And, you know, here's what's going on in the world of EVs and here's what we're thinking and here's what's going on. And that is the essence of what drives us that to Evan's point that I miss is just being able to just sit around, talk shit, and, you know, bounce from topic to topic and call out Russell's bullshit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also want to add that a lot of those early shows were like two and a half hours long. They really, they really were. were. They, were <laughs> they were so goddamn long. And I have no, like, how did we do it? Were we that much younger then? I mean, because, like... <laughs> And we were still going after two and a half hours. We'd end the show and then talk for another 45 minutes afterwards. It's like, mm -hmm. what the heck? Anyway. You know, but there were no other, there were no other sources for that stuff. You know, a lot of it was things that had come up on, on Prius chat and, and it sparked some memory. You know, we, we mm -hmm. were it, we were the nugget of what the alternative energy automobile community was. And so you know, anything that came up, it was new and we had, we had to explore it deeper. And now you can, you know, open up the internet and you're going to get slapped in the face with 10 articles from 15 different sources. And, you know, each of them with, with their own pop-ups trying to make money talking about EVs and batteries and everything else. And so it's a pretty different world now than yeah. it was when we started this thing. And, and so there was a lot to talk about because nobody talked about it before. Nobody thought about it before. Nobody considered it before. Um, and, and I don't know, I think it really made things really interesting um, to, to kind of pontificate about and, and uh, prognosticate about and where, where things were gonna go. Yeah, yeah. Fair point in context. Yeah, now we're just one voice among millions. Yeah. Speaking of one voice among millions, Danny Cooper. <laughs> what Speaking are you holding? Insignificant voices. What are you holding <laughs> back, Danny Cooper? Uh, I hold back nothing, but thank you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted, real quick, wanted to say thanks for pulling this together, Russell. Really appreciate it. Uh, any chance that I have to call you on your bullshit is always a welcome opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you you three guys have had uh, such an effect on on my life i've known you all since i was in my early 20s and and now i've got kids of my twice, own twice twice he's brought that shit up yeah <laughs> now i've got school age kids and fusco has kids that are about to graduate college and and so it's just amazing how uh 
life has gone on, time has passed, new cars have come out, industries have been created, and uh, the the three of you guys have have always uh, kind of been around for me as a part of that, and so I really appreciate all that, and you know, look forward to the to the future years where we can get back together and do this again. And I also really appreciate the the folks who are continuing to carry the what drives this torch with Russell. Uh, appreciate their dedication. Yeah, absolutely. You, you mean the idiots? <laughs> yes. Yeah, because they still don't get paid. All <laughs> mostly of them. paid. Yeah, that's yeah, true. They they get nothing. It's no, they're wonderful humans. So I I want to say how awesome it is that there hasn't been a single reference to the pink tent over Danny's shoulder. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> For an hour, people have been wondering why the hell there's a pink tent behind Danny. And I don't even think you need to describe it or explain it because that it's, would just ruin it. It's an answer that will not be provided. <laughs> some, some things are better left as an enigma, as a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Yeah, I no. drape myself in my flag. Now, now those drapes, <laughs> on the other hand, you got uh, some explaining to do. Yeah, oh ew, heck. <laughs> the, the previous owner was a smoker, huh? Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks. Um. So I, I, that's all I got. I mean, I it's it's I miss all of you guys so much. Uh, and as much as I love the new crew, and I do, I love them all. They're wonderful. Um, you know, we spent hours and hours and hours, stupid, crazy hours together uh, for years and years. And it was um, so nice when you guys came back and said you wanted to come back on and, and just talk because yeah, we always said like, we would do the show if nobody watched it just to get yep. together and bullshit yep. for a couple of hours about something we cared about, we were passionate about. And this alt car thing has always been a passion of all of the people involved in the show from totally different angles sometimes, but that's the best part about it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's, it's been nice to have you guys back. And anytime you want to get together, you're, of course, you're always welcome on the show. If nothing else to help, well, except for Fusco, to help sway the Tesla versus the Tesla stands versus the non Tesla stands. Yeah. Cold. Cause I'm definitely the minority now. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you say we As would. You say, yeah, you say we would do it if nobody listened to me. Yeah, there was years when you know we knew how we were doing on the feedback we would get from our fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we had that Google Voice number, and I think over like for a few years we got like what like half a dozen phone calls, and they were all so hilariously bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> That was the truth. That uh, oh, eighty. What was it? Eighty-one drive. What was it? Five seven one fifty-seven drive. Fifty-one drive. Something You're like way that. ahead of me. Every week, Russell would say, "And if you want to, you know, give us feedback or topics for the show, call this number." And it would go straight to voicemail. And yeah, I mean, you're right. Like half a dozen people called, and they were the most bizarre calls. Yeah. I like, I like. This is the point in the show where we explain voicemail and <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, Back yeah. in the old days, kids. Yeah. Wait, it was a rotary, and you had to turn the dial until you mm -hmm. got the seven one fifty. No, you turn the yeah, phone. Right. You hold the dial steady. You, hold the, right. you turn the phone. You turn. Yeah. Wasn't that? Huh. Yeah, like a combination lock. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> My rotary phone had a hashtag. Ooh. <laughs> that's how ahead it was okay well anything you'd like to plug while you're here danny yeah. cooper nothing no no man no just what drives us i appreciate you keeping it going absolutely tony schaefer nope just you guys cheers evan busco send money to what drives us and and keep them on the air man they're they're it's it's an important part of uh this whole this whole EV thing and uh, people need to pay attention. There you go. 
we, we have been a voice in the wilderness sometimes, sometimes yep. a little too wilderness. But... <laughs> lost in the woods. Maybe, yeah, maybe we were lost in the woods, but we meant well. We were trying. It came from the heart. Um, as always, you can find us at what drives us all over social media, uh, at whether it's Facebook, YouTube, whatever. If you're on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, maybe even suggest it to your friends. I also want to thank Michael Mannering for his theme music. Visit him at manthing.com. Uh, I want to thank my good friends, Danny Cooper, Tony Schaefer, and Evan Fusco for hanging out with me for an hour because, yeah, thank you. And thanks for letting us share that with some of our viewers. And I can't wait to see the comments. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to be slaughtered for my Tesla vitriol, as always. <laughs> Did the, you funny know part that the, the funny part the viewers don't know is that Russell just said hanging out with him for an hour. This is the second hour. Yeah. We're only airing We're, we're in, technically hour. in the third hour. Okay, we're yeah. now in the third hour. <laughs> there was a whole pre-show that no one's privy to. Yeah. Because yeah. hey, that's Evan, what happens when we all get on the, on the con. We just talk. Evan, did you know that on the Tesla Life there's a drinking game whenever I'm involved? I did not. Yeah, there, there's a Russell drinking game on the Tesla life. And what what does the... Uh... Oh, anytime I say anything, Andy Tesla, take a drink, which oh. means everyone's shit faced by the end of the show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which is why I don't do that show anymore. But I, <laughs> I love Mark and Casey and Patrick and all that. I just like, they didn't need somebody that negative. So anyway, thanks so much to all of you for watching. Uh, have a great time and uh, we will see you soon. Download us next week. Come on, oh, Danny. Did you forget? And, and find out. Oh, I have, I have, there you go. What drives us? We got to work on that. That was really sad. <laughs> that, that, that was horrible. Uh, that was horrible. All right, let's this start is what over. happens Take when you get old. <laughs> horrible and beautiful all at the same time. Okay, that's the end of the show. I'll...